All right, guys, this week we are going over our nymphing leader. It has changed. We've made it better. We've made it stronger. If you guys don't know, we do a ton of coastal nymphing. What I call coastal nymphing is stuff that you can't Euro nymph. You can't high stick nymph. It is too far out there to do it. You do need an indicator, but you might do a little bit of high stick nymphing slash Euro nymphing as well in your day out on the water. We build a leader specific for this. You guys might've seen videos on it previously, but we've made some tweaks. We've cut some corners. We made it simple. You're gonna need three basic materials to make this happen. I'm gonna walk you guys through this. This is a great beating setup slash nymphing setup when you are not right on top of the fish and you have to throw it a little bit farther. As always guys, you wanna see more videos like this, consider hitting the like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's get into her. All right, so you guys know that we do a lot of the meat eater style stuff here on the coast. When we're throwing beads or goofy things at the fish that are feeding on uh, coastal salmon eggs. But if you live here, you realize that that's the only food for the fish in our system. And if you wanna be a fly angler or even a gear angler, understanding the biology and the habitat behind your fish is I think one of the most enjoyable things you can do in fishing and maximizing this is great. Now flip it around, you guys are nymphing on your stream where there is good bug production. This is the exact same nymphing leader that I use for interior streams when we can't use more than one fly. So we're gonna have to use an exposed weight and a nymphing setup for that. And I really think it maximizes it. I do honestly feel that I hook more fish because of this setup than you do with your standard nine foot tapered leader or even nine foot tapered fluorocarbon leader. So first thing you guys are we're gonna need only three things. Well, maybe four, depending how you look at it. First one is 20 pound maxima. Then you guys are gonna need this stuff. This stuff is super cool. This is the Rio indicator tippet. A lot of guys are like, wait, this is Euro stuff. Don't worry, we're gonna do some different stuff with this that I think is really critical and is gonna put some more fish at the end of your line. This is the 1X. This is what I'm gonna recommend for this setup. You could go a little bit lighter than this, but the 1X works really well. And last but not least, 4X, Floroflex, Rio, any fluorocarbon's gonna work. I like this stuff, it has some stretch. It works great for me, I really like the diameter, but any sort of 4X, seven pound, plus or minus fluorocarbon, and it does need to be fluorocarbon, is critical for this setup. And the last thing, we forgot about the last thing, there's one more thing you need, and that is tippet rings. These guys right here. But this changes the game when it comes to tying lines together. Now, this rig is not pretty. You guys that are casting 90 feet, beautiful tight loops that open up and lay delicately to your dry fly rising sipping trout, this rig is not going to do that. This rig is a little bit dirty, a little bit sloppy, but we're going for the most simple way to do it and the most effective way to do it where it won't break, plus how we can fix it when the proverbial hits the fan. So let's take a peek at it. Traction loop is where you wanna start. You guys will see that, here she is here. Trick on this one, if you are doing the egg eaters that we do on the coast, uh, make sure this is as big as a bead so you can fit it through on occasion. The tangle fix is useful there. If you are going to be nymphing, uh, you can make it a little bit smaller than this, but it is in the game. We're going to do two feet of this. This is ideally where you're going to put your indicator. Now, we have the tippet ring. Super clean, super easy. Why did we go this? Well, I can actually tie a knot between what I'm gonna show you guys in a second, this 1X sight style indicator stuff, or even just like a 1X mono would work, but you are gonna find it's a pain in the butt. So tip it ring there. Now, this is the sight stuff. So it's kind of cool. You Hopefully you guys can see that comes down. And what I'm looking for is if my hand here is going to be the indicator, what I can use this for is I can see a lot that goes on underneath the indicator. I don't know how many times I've seen a strike where I'm like seeing this and all of a sudden it's going this way and I'm anticipating that and I know to be ready. And when it comes to setting the hook on 
indicators going down, you guys know that being prepared is great. Knowing that it's going to happen is great. You'll see the right drift. You'll see this thing sort of tweaking around and you'll get on your A game. Instead of zoning out and looking at the birds and listening to nature around you, you'll be focused and it's one cue we can use. It's also another cue we can use to see how the drift is going, see what's going on. Maybe we move the indicator left or right as this is going in different directions. Super useful. I use it a ton. Definitely recommended. Then we go to another tippet rank. There it is. So this is your butt section. This is what is going to be turning over the indicator. Sometimes I put the indicator right into the colored stuff. Sometimes I put it on the thick maxima. It is about breast to hand. So I'm six feet tall. So that's roughly three and a half, maybe four feet long. That is a perfect length for you guys. Now below that is what does the fishing. What does the fishing, what gets in the zone, what is hidden from the fish. And that is our fluorocarbon 4X. And all we're going to do with that is do a full breast span. So again, I'm six feet. So if we stretch this guy right out, full breast span, there we go. It's roughly six feet. Super easy onto the tippet ring. That's why we use these instead of mucking around with a 1X to 4X size drop of fluorocarbon to a site, which will cause it's not impossible. I tie this knot all the time and I did it before. And if you guys seen some of our early videos, we were tying knots between them, but I just didn't trust this knot enough. And it broke too many times at this point uh, and made the day challenging. So do your improved clinch knot to the tippet ring. Life is good. You know that that is 98% strength. I'm sure some knot geek will correct me on that, but this one's strong. It breaks only because you've done something wrong. So there's that knot. Pull on your tag ends, push everything down as always with your knots like we talked about. Check, ooh, that turned a bit on me. If you guys don't know what I'm doing here is I'm checking the knot. If you need to do it multiple times, once is not enough. And then cut your tag end short, just a little bit of a tag end. Tag ends are the devil on any leader because tag ends will cause tangles. But if you cut them too short, right to the knot, you're going to break knots because it's going to slip in. So my rule of thumb is half a millimeter for you guys that are metric. I have no clue what that is in an inch, but a small amount that has a little bit of a tag end. Okay, so here is our breast to hand. And then at the end of this, we are going to do one more tippet ring. Yes, there are three tippet rings and it's kind of excessive. It's a lot of metal on a fly uh, casting leader, but it just makes life easy because if it ever breaks at any of these junction points, you're out on the water, you want to go quick. It is a one very simple knot. Not that blood knots or surgeon's knots are hard, but it's just one thing you can take out of the mix and make really easy. So if you guys don't know what this is, this is your tippet ring thing. You've seen me done this a couple of times. So you can either do the spin with this. This is what this is for. It's great. This is what holds the tippet ring. This is not the tippet ring. Or you can do the pass around method. I do the pass around method because I'm pretty quick with it. This is from many days of freezing my butt off on a river with cold fingers. The fingers just do this naturally. Tag in through the back. Lick your knot before you pull it out. And then down she goes. Test your knot fully. Again, the three times one, test, two, test, three, pull, cut. Now you take it off this little guy, super easy. Pop it off, take it off, close it. Make sure you close it. You throw it on your desk, you'll spill these everywhere. It's a pain in the butt. And now you have your tippet ring. I'm gonna cut that short. All right, so there she is. Now this is the end tippet ring. What you're gonna do above this is this is where your split shot goes. This is gonna anchor everything. And then below that, you're gonna do 18 inches plus or minus a 4X or 5X fluorocarbon. You don't have to worry about sticking with 4X. We want it as thin as possible. It usually breaks down here. It usually is the split shot that gets you. And usually this is where it breaks and you just tie back on with a new 18 inch tippet. Don't have to redo all of this. Use this for your Prince Nymph hair zier style, mayfly, stonefly, uh, nymphing techniques on rivers that you can't high stick. And definitely on your coastal streams where you're reaching out to far stuff that you might not be able to get to 
with a high stick or a Euro nymph style. So in summary, we've got the 20 pound maxima, we've got a 10 inches to 20 inches of the color change. We have six feet of our 4X fluorocarbon and then your tippet past that. I hope this puts more fish at the end of your line. I've got a video right here that goes over some of the mens that we use when we're going after those egg eaters, those bull trout, those cutthroat, those rainbows, they're eating salmon eggs. Uh, walk you through how we mend. This is great for nymphing just in general. And as always, you wanna see more videos like this, please consider hitting the like button. Hit the subscribe button and we'll catch you in the next video.